Hi, this is Paige, and welcome to our first television review. Instead of movies, we're doing a TV show. A Cartoon Network reality show called Total Drama Island. I have no idea who the voice actors are. I didn't really think it mattered, honestly, because whoever they are, they did a really good job. The animation is fairly cheesy. The premise is basically a reality show. They get these 22 campers together, they lie to them and tell them that they are going to a five-star resort until they sign the contract and they dump them off at some crappy summer camp in Canada. It's hilarious. The characterization is bad. Like, really bad. But deliberately bad. So, hilarious. Basically, every cliche you've ever seen in any teen movie, ranging from The Breakfast Club to 10 Things I Hate About You, is in this movie. Deliberately. It's hilarious. Again, the characters are deliberately cliched. You have the textbook juvenile delinquent. Kind of like Keith Ledger's character in 10 Things I Hate About You. You know kind of guy who lights his cigarettes on the Bunsen burner in the science lab. <laughs> <laughs> that is Duncan. Facial piercings, green mohawk, skull on his t-shirt, carved skulls as a hobby. Hot wires cars. They recruit him out of juvie. And you kind of get the impression it's not his first stint in juvie. They have the textbook fat guy. Every fart joke you have ever heard is rolled into this one big dude. Owen. I like Owen. He's the happy-go-lucky fat guy. The guy everybody likes. You can't help but like him. He's like a big, huge, happy teddy bear. You want to hug him, honestly. You have the textbook. Textbook mean girl. We are not talking Lindsay Lohan. We are talking the real thing. You love to hate these girls. I know you went to high school with some of them. I know you did because I went to a hick school and I went to high school with some of them. The only difference in my neck of the woods is they four-wheel. Yeah, but they have the really expensive, really trendy four-wheeler. Probably with the decals and the stickers and it doesn't go over 30 miles an hour because they might break it in. You have the textbook dumb blonde, Lindsay. Who well, honestly you, you, you want to root for? But then her stupidity kicks in, and it's like, oh, God, baseball. You just, you can't root for her because she's, she's basically the mean girl, Heather. She's basically Heather's stooge. And then, you know, basically every cliche character you've ever imagined. Like I said, the counselor in training, the preppy chick. Oh, you want to bitch slap her in the next week? Or maybe that's just me. And then, of course, one of my favorite characters, two of my favorite characters, actually, you have Lashana, the big black girl from the projects, the no-nonsense, no-bullshit, in-your-face kind of girl. I loved I'm her. I'm not big. I'm curvy. She's big. But she was curvy, too. So, I rooted for her through most of the series. Yeah. And then you have Gwen. The textbook goth girl writes angsty in a little black diary, wears dark colors, streaky hair, very pale. Probably last got sunlight sometime around kindergarten. That kind of pale. The dark lipstick. She was the one that I voted for through the whole thing because she was relatable. Uh, don't let him kid you. He was rooting for the fat guy. And then, of course, honestly, my two favorite characters were not contestants. They were the host, Chris, the windblown, studly, unshaven, stoner type, sadistic, SOB, oh my god. He is the warden of the summer camp or fall camp or whatever the hell it is. And then there's Chef, Chef Hatchet. Yes, big black dude with an anchor tattoo, squash you like a bug as soon as look at you. I liked him. Deliberately cook slop and paste for the campers while preparing delicious delicacies for himself and Chris, as you later find out. Jerk. I will say this, in the first episode you see one of his sandwiches crawl across the floor. 
watch for it. I didn't believe him. I had to go back. No, you see the sandwich crawl across the floor. It's hilarious. This is not something we let our kids watch. Because there are some thoroughly disgusting moments. I'm not just talking about Chef Slop. I am talking about the feast of disgustingness. I am talking about the Triple Dog Dare episode where Chef and Chris actually bet each other. Hey, dude, whoever boots first has to cough up a hundred bucks. I almost booted and it was a freaking cartoon. This seriously, I mean, for anybody who's squeamish, watch yourself. But again, the characters are deliberately cliche, but likable. Even Chris is deliberately cliche, but funny. The characters you don't really care about, like Ezekiel, the homeschooled misogynist, they go pretty early. The only exception to the, oh god, when do they leave, rule that overlasted to me were the squealers. The BFFs? Oh my god, we're gonna be BFFs forever? Oh my god! Oh my god, they made you want a boot. You actually cheer when they're gone. The best part is when they're fighting and Oh my god, I totally don't want to be your friend anymore. Well, I don't want to be your friend first. That kind of thing. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know if you know any girls like this, but trust me, they are just as irritating in real life as they are on TV. This show actually captured my interest. I normally do not have a single inkling to watch reality shows. There are very few that have been able to catch my interest. And... Honestly, this is this was above and beyond the best reality show. This is not a reality show. It is scripted. It is animated. But it's a parody of reality shows, which is what makes it bearable. I loathe reality TV. That might actually be a video rant for another day if they put one more freaking reality show on TV. All I'm saying. And this took all of the worst things about reality TV, the disgusting challenges, the irritating people, the obnoxious hosts, and shoved it all into one teen populated summer camp on Cartoon Network and made it funny, made it hilarious, made you actually feel for these people. You actually root for the characters. You care who wins. You shouldn't because they're cartoons. They're cliche, badly written cartoons. <laughs> I can't say they're badly written. They are written exactly how they're meant to be written, which is cliche and badly and stereotypical. But it's good. I like it. And the thing, and the thing is, is we actually came into the series, you know, into the third season, halfway through the third season, mind you. Total drama world tour. And it was it was that good that we decided to go back and find the first season well okay that don't let him kid you that was an accident we found the first two seasons on netflix and at that point it was like whoa we can go back and find out who the hell these people are <laughs> yeah because that's one of the things you know you think about later it was one of those shows that came back to your mind and suddenly you're just gonna <laughs> Yeah, Duncan, or yeah, Courtney, except not so much of that for me, because she was the counselor and training chick that... <laughs> but to me, this show actually, at least the first season, the first season is all that we have seen all the way through. The first season rated a total five stars. We are going to watch the second season, which is also on Netflix. That will be getting its own review, if I have my way. But that are... Blah, blah, blah. But those are all of my thoughts on Total Drama Island. Island! Our next movie review is going to be for The Avengers, which I thought was awesome. Little spoiler for my own video there. And our next television review is actually going to be for The Walking Dead, an AMC original. And if you can't guess what it's about from the title, shame on you. Alright, that's all I have to say for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed.